Hello friends, welcome back to yet another session on product and brand management. Taking a cue from where we stopped in last session, wherein we were discussing product and uh, you know product portfolio management. And I'd just to give you a glimpse of that you see we are going for a broader understanding then we will be uh, you know siphoning it towards uh, specific aspects and reaching out to product and then traversing into brand. So, uh, after this I would be taking you along let us say categories, competitions, customers and specifically with reference to analysis and then we would be thinking in terms of strategic progression wherein we would be talking about how to strategize in terms of product management. And after that we would be going for elements like pricing, promotion, we have gone for a quick correlation of these elements or let us say relationship of these elements uh, earlier as well. But now we would be going for an elaborate discussion on you know for example types of pricing to understand how it is related with product management and the promotional perspective and retail channel perspective. And then we would be focusing upon innovation, insight, design and design thinking which is a very, very important part of product management and then uh, rest other uh, you know aspects also. So, coming back in portfolio, portfolio management you see there are some crucial steps. So, first element is portfolio analysis and we discussed about this, I am just enumerating this here for, for you to give a you know cue. Then we have to think in terms of resource allocation and just recall the last session or revisit the last session and you would realize when we focused on the discussion on one product uh, actually supporting the larger portfolio or complete portfolio many a times forming the product portfolio roadmap, how this portfolio in a coherent way can go all together. Now, this is a very complex thing which I have mentioned about you know uh, last time as well. New product development and acquisitions is a part of portfolio perspective because then you know while looking at the complete picture we realize that what kinds of products have to be added on and how and this I have talked about in earlier product line product width reference as well. And then in strategic part I would be mentioning it once again while I will be using it with the uh, you know strategic orientation to demonstrate that if we look at a line with a perspective of profitability how to use it as a uh, you know strategy in terms of line growth and line stretching and then I have mentioned about this. So, you see the logic in product portfolio management is related to life cycle that is enhancing the life cycle of each product potential to looking at the potential developing the potential both ways mutual strength within the families and lines how to strengthen you know whole of it is it is very simple like you know a larger joint family is uh, staying together, how they enhance the strength of each member of the family with the strength of the other members of the family and so on. For example, someone is doing very well in his career or her career and uh, the person supports the family economically for example, someone is at good at something, so, so someone is taking care of home and so on. You see, so that is how families are uh, looked at and then between families and lines also. And I will not go into the details of the terminologies, we have talked about this many a times. The objective is very clear, it is related to satisfying customers, gain loyalty because ultimate aspect as I have been repeatedly telling you is to have loyal customers who are using your product just like that. Push the competition aside, if you have loyal customers 
competition might not be able to touch you and be profitable of course pro being profitable is the lifeblood of the organization and then stay forever and many organizations with all their product portfolios like SBI, Coke and Pepsi and several others are you know strong examples of this argument and this discussion. Now I will be taking you towards product category. Just you know look at for example industry in industrial sector we have a category called components category. Let us say we have a category called capital machinery, we have manufacturing machine category or let us say tools category. If you look at let us say a functionality perspective, so we can say you know mixers and grinders, processors, you know enablers these kind of categories and then you can fit in any product you can imagine at this moment here. Then you can have a category of customer needs based on customer needs bed linen for example. You may categorize it further through a broader broader category outline like home textiles. You see when you when you go to a home decor shop and, and you think in terms of your you know curtains as well as you know bed linens and then so many things actually. So, so and then at the same time you are actually looking imagining the complete room or sometimes a complete house. So, that is how uh, the seller also categorizes the customers. Customer preferences in terms of movies, I have mentioned this earlier, you, you are surfing through Netflix, Netflix is actually tracking the way you are looking at or surfing the movies and, and the kind of movies you like and then they start prompting you, you know with a particular category of movies. So, they categorize movies on let us say war movies or fiction movies or, or many, many kinds of categories can be seen that way also. Then demographics, wherein you know demographics can be associated with let us say sports bike. Now, sports bike obviously uh, is actually liked by you know they, these are liked by sports people or let us say sports enthusiasts or let us say younger lot who wish for high speed actually same as with sports cars or sporty cars basically. Then convenience you know convenience you can have n number of products. Quality you know what what quality is perceived by the customer and then you know if you have created quality as a benchmark. So, definitely you can think of and it is relative. So, I will leave up to you for you know choosing examples according to your own choice. Performance you know a performance of a car, performance of an electrical appliance, performance of a mobile phone for example, performance of a mobile network actually. So, so there can be various kind of aspects through which you want to look at things and then you see this not this cannot be uh, a composite uh, you know specific list there can be interpretative uh, aspects to it, you may interpret these things slightly differently according to your own experience, but the, the, uh, the message is that there is a categorization perspective in the mind of the producer and the product manager specifically. And then price can be a categorizing factor, for example, you know premium priced product. Then you know consumer itself can be you know an aspect for example, children, children products, kids products, kids toys, children from this age group to, to that age group that means children and demographic perspective especially in terms of age. Then occasion can also define the categorization like you know uh, you know when when you are school going work or let us say events or let us say you know parties and occasion marriages I have mentioned somewhere in my discussions in preceding discussions that India you know marriages is you know they, they, they constitute a larger occasion for for whole of the country in fact. Packaging 
can be a categorization we have talked about that earlier as well and product itself has you know several kinds of uh, categorization for example carbonated drinks let us say you know uh, sugar free. Now, here it reminds me of one thing which I should be suggesting you that categorization is an evolving fact. For example, this sugar free category was not much of uh, you know a prominent kind of a thing let us say 2 or 3 decades back wherein people were health conscious, but they used to work out and uh, you know uh, they either used to consume sugar or did not consume sugar. But then there is a sugar free element which came in with, with scientific developments and so on and then you know several alternatives started coming in and people started consuming those products and it is a very large category. So, you have the taste, but you do not have that kind of uh, a content. So, so uh, which might harm someone because of health reasons. So, See, now let us go to a definitional frame. We have discussed a broader outlook on categories. So, product categories are typically created by you know organizations, firms or brands to focus their promotional efforts effectively by grouping similar items together. Now, it's, it, it makes sense, it is very logical actually you know that uh, for example, you uh, separately promote each and every product many a times it is very, very difficult and, and uh, you know creating messages, storyboards around specific products again is very difficult. So, you broadly categorize and promote because you understand that it would be sold to a similar kind of a customer or you know kind of. Uh, uh, there, there can be a cord which can be generated for promoting these products and when I say promoting the products, I am not just mentioning about communication, I am mentioning about actually product promotion in all the terms. So, when we will we'll see, see for example, Dove skin care, Dove personal care, you know Dove hair care and so on, fast track men watches and you know women watches and so on. So, there, there is different kinds of categories and, and as I said uh, uh, you know for, for many organizations there can be a very, very broad category or, or let us say uh, you know very specific category and it depends how customers have started looking at these things. For example, if watches are preferred uh, despite of gender then you might be re-looking at categories. It, it, it depends how customer actually thinks about it and that is why universally liked watches are also being manufactured or produced. Now, product category management is a process implying an organization of stock keeping units or SKUs into separate categories based on particular characteristics. Again a definitional perspective, once the products are grouped into categories, coherent pricing, promotion and marketing strategies applied by the category management team, product managers at large to make sure the business goals and targets are achieved. So, coherence in pricing and promotion is a very important thing which can be brought through this kind of you know an element and this will ef very effectively be uh, shaping our thought process when we will be talking about product strategy at the end of the day. There is a category attractiveness analysis. You see the important factors in assessing the underlying attractiveness of a product category are aggregate market factors, category factors and environmental factors. I will be sailing you through all these uh, you know one by one and then I will be taking you through some more aspects related to category. But here a very important thing which you should be focusing upon. You see look at this discussion or uh, you know almost all the discussions with the perspective of a product manager, person who has to take decisions, what that person should be thinking actually and what is the logic behind you see and uh, last time uh, I think few sessions back 
I mentioned specifically when you are working with a large organization and you are the person at the hem of the affairs. So, would you be taking you know how, how would you be tracking that uh, how should the organization be pursuing each and every single product they produce. For example, they are producing uh, 300 brands that is product with different uh, variation and names and then there are n number of aspects associated with them. You know few of them are retailed at some outlet, few of them are targeted towards specific customers and so on. So, how would you track about uh, you know what is to be done and what is to, you know how it uh, goes ahead. Categorization is one of the aspects which itself may be thought of as a strategy and we will be talking about this briefly in our strategy segment. Aggregate market factors are related to category size measured in both units and monetary value. Now, you see to make things simpler, you go to uh, a channel partner and you say that you know this product has to be sold like this, this product has to be sold like this and when customer comes in you have to talk about this product with a this uh, you know with a specific perspective let us say you have to talk about linen with a specific perspective, mattress with a specific perspective and then so on. But if you train your or uh, you know uh, suggest your retail chain partners that if a customer comes in we are promoting the complete category in terms of home decor and we are suggesting a coherence and interrelationship of all the products within a category. Once they come in you also put up those things in, the, in, in front of the customer the similar way we are trying to promote that through our advertisements and pricing should be in terms of you know uh, let us say putting up a coherence in front of the customer that you see this is a markup I have for one of my rooms wherein there is a twin bed and then there are you know four windows and then there are four pillows. So, this is the total kind of a price I would be paying for decorating almost everything. Now, this makes sense and then once you put up the size you know to this it would be much simpler for you to imagine an household based sales. There you would not be thinking in terms of how many customers would be purchasing bed linen separately because then you have a structure around and you would be focusing upon these many houses they have our products. And that is what many organizations they have been doing. For example, water purifier category Eureka Forbes tried to push it up with a different kind of a strategic perspective and then they widened the category and, and they you know came up with larger structure in terms of home appliances for example. Now you see there they started focusing on, on how many homes are using their products compositively. It was a wonderful thing for them to go ahead today. I would have mentioned earlier probably you know someone from Eureka Forbes call you and they ask you how many Eureka Forbes products you are not using. So, category growth then you can monitor it you know uh, uh, at a specific level and then uh, I would be showing you a structure and life cycle. So, so we can think in terms of category life cycle also otherwise you have to put in several life cycles of several products then superimpose each life cycle on each other then find a correlation of each it can be done in today's AI world and data sciences world it can be done. But it is a difficult task and especially when you have to take call on interpreting that in favor of all the products you are having probably then you would be concluding on that which product is supporting which product. For example, does the customer buys uh, the mattresses first or the curtains first. So, so one has to think in terms of you know those kind of things, but in category you have to think compositively that makes things simpler. Sales cyclicity definitely it is again associated with product life cycle and many other elements I should not say specifically seasonality and profits. Now, there are again you know variables and attractiveness a matrix structure 
makes it easier for us to understand if market size is going on a higher side and seasonality is low, we can focus upon making it a multi season category as simple as that rest is up to your wisdom and then comes in cycle, you know, life cycle perspective on category. Now, here in front of you when we uh, here, when, when we are looking at this you know two dimensional uh, plane and a graph here think of category moving you know from introduction to maturity kind of wherein you see uh, for example, if we look at the introduction introduction stage category size might be small and I am imagining that category is introduced that is that is how we are looking at this. Then in growth the size would moderately grow or might grow at a large large level basically it depends it depends how category is promoted. Then maturity definitely it is slightly larger as compared to growth depends upon uh, are we stopping somewhere and here comes the perspective wherein you know uh, uh, in, in, in uh, strategic parlance which you would be witnessing in subsequent videos there again you revisit the elements of category through focusing on specific products and looking at lines and width and so on and then uh, you know uh, thinking in terms of that how this category can be uh, put up uh, you know can uh, can uh, uh, be projected towards further growth rather than stopping at maturity or, or uh, you know stabilizing at maturity I should not say stop. So, you see that decision can easily be taken at that particular levels and, and in decline definitely it again moves towards moderation and so and I would remind you of the aspect that there is a saddle stage because it is with products it can be with the categories as well although not much of a literature highlighting the saddle perspective with category is is there but since it is for products so we can think of that you know it can be there for categories as well and rejuvenation obviously you can rejuvenate the complete category as such so then you see category growth again there is a combination in terms of low high low and category attractiveness it can be low or start from high then go for higher and then you know moderate at a level and so on. Decision making is easier if we try to develop an expertise around what we are talking of at this moment. Now did I mention Professor Michael Porter who worked upon you know five forces model. I would be mentioning about this model couple of times in, in due course of time. It is a very uh, apt and a wonderful framework which enables the thinking of a marketing student and, and it simplifies the thought process in your mind just read it on any source. I have also used uh, you know source from uh, I have sourced it from the book we are referring to at this moment. Uh, Lehman and Weiner product management Boston McGraw-Hill. You see uh, category factors are threat of new entrants, bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of suppliers, amount of intra category rivalry. Now you see apart from five forces which are governing the situation you know including pressure from substitutes and uh, there is an element of category capacity as well, but one of the important elements which authors have included here is the amount of intra category rivalry. That means within the category which are the products which are stars that means they are drawing larger money towards them not because of pricing, but because of their attractiveness and usage. So, you see there is one advantage of such kind of products that they will push the whole category further, but there is one disadvantage also that they might push the usage of other products slightly lower on the scale. So, there you have to think in terms of you know lots of 
combinational perspective which can be met through promotional aspects. You have to promote the category in such a fashion that rivalry within the category gets reduced. Then there are environmental factors, technological factors, political factors, economic factors, regulatory factors and social factors. So, these are you know they, they uh, definitely uh, touch upon category uh, management should I say uh, from all the sides, how the economy is going on, COVID has taught us several lessons wherein you know several categories altogether have suffered, but intelligent product managers they have focused upon a portion of category that is focusing upon sub categories rather than the complete categories in due course of time to, to keep alive the category level. And now when economy is going towards a full swing revival, revival in the month of uh, you know uh, uh, November 2021 where I am recording this session for you. So, there you know again category uh, pull up has started, managers have started thinking in terms of how to develop the whole lot of a category as such. So, you see and then there are technological factors. Many a times for example, I was uh, referring to bed linen and uh, then you know curtains and mattresses within home decor category. Now, there was a time when uh, technology uh, was not specifically very advanced in terms of manufacturing of mattresses for example. So, at that particular time the category was represented mainly by bed linen or many a times curtains also. And you see there was an element of uh, social factors that is you know social perspective wherein people like to put up heavy curtains, but would not like to change curtains so many a times because, because that was a cultural or social element of, of, of sorts. Bed linen definitely uh, had a prominent kind of a thing basically and I am talking of let us say 3, 4 decades back wherein joint family structure in India was you know prominent and not many new housing structures came in. So, you see at that particular level the, the whole scenario was pushed up in home decor uh, as far as you know bed linen goes. Time came in when people started moving towards newer houses and so on, they had you know uh, their own choices in terms of construction. So, they went on for putting up lots of uh, you know uh, uh, effort in uh, thinking and purchasing uh, uh, the, the uh, curtains for example. Then in the meanwhile technological advancement came in and several uh, you know organizations they started bringing in different kinds of material for producing mattresses for example, sleep well, for example, coir foam and those kind of wherein you have lots of variety as far as you know uh, your mattresses go. Now, it has become a very prominent kind of a thing as well. Today, if you will realize that this section has become prominent within within the you know uh, uh, home segment, plus this is a price earn uh, I should say profit earning segment having slightly higher prices, and on the other side, the other products of within the sector is also being uh, you know are equally being pulled up. So, uh, in totality, today a customer is spending more on all these products cumulatively wherein technology can be a responsible factor and can be considered as a key propeller although social factors are also there and, and several economic factors are also there. So, I would leave you with this thought in this segment of category discussion. I would be coming back to you with uh, you know customers analysis in my next session and then competitors analysis in the subsequent session and then for strategy based discussion subsequently. Uh, just keep thinking as I always say keep looking around today just look around your room and think what I have suggested. I will join you next time till then goodbye.